welcome to Nellie's Song, a show about the Nellie Berman School of Music, a community music school in Haverford, Pennsylvania. I'm your host, Stephanie Young, current associate director of the Nellie Berman School. The school was founded in 1983 by Jewish immigrant Nellie Berman and has grown from seven students to 250. After Nellie's passing in 2015, her daughter, Elena Berman, a talented pianist and masterful piano pedagogue in her own right, assumed leadership of the school. Together, Nellie and Elena created a unique method of music instruction based on the Russian approach, which emphasizes technical mastery of the instrument, combined with musical ability to express emotion and a keen understanding of the composer's intent. Our students have performed as soloists, with the Philadelphia Orchestra as winners of the Greenfield Student Competition and the New Orleans Civic Symphony as winners of the New Orleans Piano Institute's Concerto Competition, and have won international music competitions, including the Grand Prize at the Chicago International Music Competition and third prize at the International Music Festival Musica Laguna in Venice, Italy. We offer lessons in piano, as well as French horn, violin, viola, cello, guitar, voice, flute, oboe, and many more, as well as chamber orchestra, piano and string chamber groups, and brass ensembles. Today, we will be highlighting our NBS Classical Music Institute, a 501c3 nonprofit that provides scholarships to financially limited, hardworking young musicians, and organizes concerts, masterclasses, workshops, and events including music competitions for the greater Philadelphia community. With us today to discuss our nonprofit program is Nellie Berman School Director Elena Berman and President of the NBS Classical Music Institute Board of Directors, Dr. Elizabeth Wang Shu. Welcome, and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to sit down with me. You're welcome. It's such a pleasure to be here. I remember you as a little seven years old student who played very difficult pieces and worked very, very hard. And it's such a, I'm so proud to see you here today and interview us, me and this wonderful lady president of our board of directors, and to see how much you have grown and how much you've accomplished. So you are one of the incredible successes of the Nellie Berman School of Music, not just as a musician, but as a human being, which is my goal. Thank you so much. Yeah, the Nellie Berman School growing up was like a second home to me. I spent a lot of time there, definitely. Um, so the two of you come from vastly different professional fields. What brought the two of you guys together? Um, it's uh, very often that uh, when a child comes to school, and I see how gifted the child is, I emotionally bond with the parents. And Elizabeth, a number of incredible parents at the school, was truly committed to classical music from the first note that Sharon has started. And one of my wonderful memories is that Sharon liked to sing, and my daughter Emma liked to sing, and I invited both of them to see Aida opera, uh, yeah. which was Metropolitan Opera Live in HC, in HC. And I was so surprised how quietly Sharon sa sat there and how much she enjoyed the opera. And then she worked so hard. And uh, every time she performed, she became better and better. And in Elizabeth's case, she truly loved music. Her first passion was Chinese opera. And then it grew into love for classical music. And in 2014, um, I invited Elizabeth to become the president of our board, and she's incredibly committed. And I thank you so much, Elizabeth, for your heartfelt love for music, love for the Nellie Berman School, support for my mother, Nellie Berman, and now support for me and for the Nellie Berman School. It has been my pleasure, and it's my privilege. I would say I'm a medical member, but I would say the main contributing factor for us, our closeness today, <laughs> is, I guess, the drive for perfection and an and affinity for classical music love. That's wonderful. <clears throat> so Elena, what is the most rewarding part of being the director of a community music school for you? Um, all of the women in my family were classical pianists. Mm -hmm. And I grew up with music coming from every door 
every day uh, practicing hours with my mother, going to concerts, uh, studying with a very, very high level classical music school. Music is something that is my second nature. And um, I uh, love to see that classical music is able to reach such a high level of what Elizabeth said, perfection. And when I see students from concert to concert and how much uh, success and how much improvement they make, it truly really makes my life have a meaning. We all want to have meanings in our lives, and I believe that being able to give classical music education to a number of very gifted and hardworking students make, makes my life uh, have a meaning. That's wonderful, and that also reminds me that you actually had aspired to be a classical um, music performer, right? Yes. What made you decide to pursue music education instead? Um, I was groomed from a first note from the age of five uh -huh. to become a, a performer, uh, studying with a very, very serious classical music school in Odessa, uh, Russia, um, the Stolyarsky Institute. Upon coming to the United States, I studied with some brilliant teachers, including Susan Starr in Philadelphia, then traveling to New York, studying at Manhattan School of Music with Gary Grafman, and then I had to and it was truly, it seemed to me it was the end of the world. But very often in life, when one door closes, another door opens. And for a number of years, I worked at, I went to University of Pennsylvania, I have a degree in French literature. And then I started working in New York for the top music management, management in New York mm -hmm. called ICM Artists, mm -hmm. run by Lee Lamont, who was the um, president and who represented Isaac Stern and Gidan Kramer, Gefim Bronfman, Moscow Philharmonic, Leningrad Philharmonic, all of these incredible places. And I traveled with a number of musicians. I was supposed to be at um, Carnegie Hall concert, Lincoln Center, Alice Dali, Metropolitan Muse uh, Museum concerts. And after several years, I realized that as much as I loved being there and listening to music, I desperately missed playing and touching the keys. And then I went back to get my master's degree at Temple University, and there I started teaching secondary piano to students who had to have, as music education man, uh, majors, they had to have piano. And I became in love with pedagogy. I think that my, genetically, I'm predisposed to teaching. And it was always very fascinating for me to see how a child or older student can start with almost nothing. And then, if I would find the key to that each individual student, how to open the heart, the mind, and technical aspect of each child, they would become truly incredible and produce and perform music that would touch me. And uh, it's it really, even now talking about this, it brings goosebumps to my skin because this is what truly is my, um, my goal in life and uh, my mission. Yeah, I have to say, I've seen many piano teachers and teachers in general over the years, and there's such a special atmosphere whenever I um, walk into one of your lessons, it's just like the warmest, coziest space. <laughs> you, you can just tell the child is sitting there and just absorbing in a very comfortable way. Yes. It's, it's also not even a question sometimes of music, but believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. When the child knows that they are good at something, that they're special in something, they truly become better human beings. Mm -hmm. They become self-confident and they are all of a sudden, it's almost like a window into their soul that is open. And I am fascinated by being able to find the key to each child and it makes me very happy. That's wonderful. So Elizabeth, as you said, you come from the medical field, clearly a very different field from music in a lot of ways. <coughs> but what inspired your love of music? Well, as a child, my parents would take me to opera, to ballet. I watched Bashoa's Russian ballet in Taiwan, and uh, also the orchestra concerts. That Those exposures actually fostered a love to classical music. And as a Chinese, I also am a lover of Chinese opera. But um, at the end of the day, I, I found even when I'm working at home or anything, my Alexa is constantly <laughs> playing Tchaikovsky, Bach. I just say, um, Alexa, play some classical music. <laughs> and one song after another, it, it is in my van and in my soul. I think my parents did a great job on me. <laughs> That's great. So what inspired you um, to you know, give back to the local arts community by joining a nonprofit um, music schools board? Well, 
When I first came to Nella Berman School, mm -hmm. I was wowed and dazzled by the caliber of the teachers here and the passions of the teachers here. It is so different. Like you said, the atmosphere is so different. Mm -hmm. But I also noticed that um, with the scholarship program, the school is constantly in need of more people to get involved. But all the parents are so busy. They all lead a very busy life. Mm -hmm. Despite of their desire to help, mm -hmm. not many people could actually commit to it. So when Elena invited me first to join the board to start helping volunteer, I decided to step in. You know, I'm a medical member and I'm a parent. So I lead a very busy life too. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you just got a doctorate degree. No, that's when the 2015. <laughs> it was like yesterday, but it's been four but years already. So far. Yeah, I, I am. I have a very busy life. I'm also very involved with my own professional body, American Physical Therapy Associate. Mm -hmm. I'm the research liaison. I'm also chair of the geriatric group. Yeah, uh, I'm very busy. But mm -hmm. sometimes you have to prioritize and what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. And sometime in your life, you have some higher calling. You just can't ignore. And this is my calling, and I just have to answer it. That's so wonderful. So speaking of that, what's the most rewarding part of you, of, it, of being a, like the board of president's director? To see all the students, how much they improve. Every time we have scholarship audition, to see like audition those kids, how much they improve. Um, they just showcase what they have learned, what they have achieved since last time they auditioned. And that really, really like filled my heart. And I remember one event, particularly, um, we had a winter concert in Chemo Center. And Stephanie, you were there, oh, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. We were hosting a uh, international competition. We have students from Russia, from Italy to compete. That was a concert to, uh, <laughs> to remember Nelly Berman. And unfortunately, at that time, um, Elena was ill. So uh, I step up, and I was—I had a privilege on stage. I was bestowing those students with the medals, yeah. and you know, my heart was filled just with joy, and my eyes with tears. I'm getting emotional talking about that. Yeah, that was such a fantastic event. Just it was the a day way. of classical yes. music. Oh my yes. God! There were 250 students from 12 states and five countries. That's correct. And we we had 29 gold winners and 21 platinum winners yeah. in Chemo Center. That was what a day. That yeah. was my most rewarding moment. Mm -hmm. I think my most rewarding moment from that particular event was afterwards, one of the parents came up and said it was the best competition experience that her kid had ever had, that it was so supportive. And I think that's one of the things about the school, is that because we're a community music school, mm -hmm. we're able to really support the students and, you know, provide them with what, with a really personalized level of um, service that I think other places may not necessarily be able to do just because of their size. Yeah, and, and, and yes. I personally house the, uh, the gold winner from Russia, mm -hmm. Boris. He oh, stayed in my so house. Yeah. Yes, um, they needed two Russian winners, the platinum winner and the gold winner. They needed a place to stay. Mm -hmm. So uh, I hosted Boris uh, from Russia. We're still Facebook friends, and, mm -hmm. and he wished me happy birthday. I wish him happy birthday. And we took him to tour our museum, mm -hmm. pick nice. strawberries. Very. We had a great time. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's very special. Special. Very, very special. special. Thank very, you very so special. much for um, opening your house and opening your heart. Oh, it's, and it's, it's a privilege. I know how much you love music and all the concerts you organize at your house. You have wonderful friends through Nanelli Berman School of Music. It's your family, musical family. Yes, uh, um, I, I must be part Russian, my past <laughs> life. <laughs> <laughs> So how did the scholarship fund come to be? Um, it's quite an interesting story, because sometimes one person <coughs> in life can make a difference. And it all started when I was a very young teacher, um, truly maybe inexperienced at that time, because it takes years to become knowledgeable about uh, teaching. And this was a first student that I got. This was a very shy little six years old girl. Her name was Eliza McCarthy. Her mother's name was Caroline McCarthy. And this little girl was homeschooled. And all of a sudden, I saw this child who was willing at the age of six or seven to sit at the piano whole day long. Mm -hmm. Her mother was completely like you. She was our first president of the board. And she 
uh, the girl was willing to spend two, three, four, five hours. And I started teaching her many hours. I would, I almost considered her to be my musical child. And probably every day she would come to my house and I would practice two, three hours a day. And instead of having one lesson a week that her parents could pay for with difficulty, uh, her mom was a veterinarian. Again, nothing to do with music. Um, I don't remember what her father did, but I know that they were struggling for money. And I was so inspired by her love of music. Then uh, I could teach for free. My mother Nelly could teach for free. So whenever there would be a gifted child that we would evaluate and figure out, wow, this child can hear music, can understand patterns, can memorize, is emotionally passionate, she and I would teach way beyond, way beyond. I remember there was a boy who used to come from Orisburg, which is, it was Kyle Lua. Uh, and he uh, later on won and played with Philadelphia Orchestra twice, and he became an eye surgeon. Yeah. And uh, anyway, he had money, but in the case of Eliza McCarthy, she did not. So then other teachers would come, and we had to pay them money. They, we wouldn't be able to ask them to, to, to teach for free. Some of them were not even pianists. They were violin teachers and flute and uh, uh, cello. And all those wonderful musicians, they needed to make money. So how do we pay them, and how do we make these children really good when, in reality, to be excellent in music. In case of Kyle Lua, his parents bought an apartment around the main line, and he st stayed fi Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And probably my mother taught him four days every single day. He had maybe 12 hours a week, maybe a little bit less. Maybe I'm exaggerating a little mm -hmm. bit, but hours and hours. Other teachers couldn't. So Caroline McCarthy was inspired by her own daughter, and she wanted to make it possible for gifted students like her daughter to have multiple lessons a week. And at that time, my mother Nellie and my stepfather David Lefkowitz and Caroline and I, we uh, applied for a special 501c3 um, non for profit. And in that case, we would be able to raise money, which is what our board does with the help of uh, Elizabeth. Uh, to raise money to allow these kids to have more than one lesson a week. And when my mother came to the United States, she wanted the vision that she had for her music school, even though she started with just a few students in her house. Right. Was she wanted them to play chamber music. She wanted them to have multiple lessons, theory, um, uh, choir, music history, based on the traditions of Stalyarsky Institute, which is the special professional music school that she studied and where and, I studied. you studied there, too, yeah. Yeah, and I studied there. A number of our teachers who came from Odessa studied this. And um, the way that it was done in the former Soviet Union is that children would be evaluated, just like my mother and I did, when they would start at the age of seven. And based on their abilities in different subjects, they would be put into specialized schools. So children who would be very gifted in math and science would be together in the specialized schools. Kids who were loved ballet would be in ballet schools. This is why ballet and and sports and ice skating is so incredible in Russia. Music students were put into specialized music school where they had two hour lessons a week or sometimes two hour and a half lesson a week, then they had an assistant of the teacher who would teach, constantly competing, constantly studying theory and all kinds of musical subjects, in, in, in um, completely immersed in the music world. So coming to United States, my mother saw that all of a sudden kids in the United States, they wanted to have sports. Sports was this incredible emphasis that everybody made in their lives. And she said, why isn't music? Why can't music, for some children who don't like sports, and sports are wonderful, sports do their own thing of mm -hmm. building self-confidence, but classical music, for some children, is their lifesaver. It means it gives them great, great sense of self, sense of beauty. It fascinates them. And those children cannot just study half an hour, 45 minutes an hour. They must have two hours a week. In fact, we have a little girl, Isabella Florendo, who has three-hour lessons on piano per week and two hours on violin. She has five hours of lessons, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, she started this at the age of, uh, she was my mother's first student, then she was my student, then mine and Mariana Przewalska, then Mariana and Anna. So this girl had all of these possibilities. Now she started voice, so she now has actually uh, six hours a week of lessons, <laughs> and and she's good in math, and she's an amazing runner, like it's able to run fast, ten yeah. miles, studying French. So, and I asked her at the age of eight. Her mom said, "Ask Isabella, what does she want to do?" And I asked Isabella, "What do you want to do?" She said, "I want to be a heart surgeon." 
and then where do you want to go to school? I haven't decided either Oxford or Cambridge was her answer. She changed her mind afterwards, the year afterwards, to become a neurosurgeon. But I'm sure she will become. So the school that we have, unlike Curtis, that raises money for kids who definitely want to be performers, our school is not geared towards the idea that classical music has to be a profession. And it hasn't been for maybe a few students like Daniel Schlossberg, who went to got a doctorate degree at Yale University, uh, um, Aria Levioff, who went to Manhattan School of Music, and others. But majority of our students in the scholarship program go into professions like this year, for example, um, Priya Ganesh uh, studying math at um, uh, MIT. Uh, Elizabeth Dorder, Sharon Sue studying at Columbia Mechanical Engineering. Uh, Cornell uh, University. Cornell, Cornell, I apologize. Mechanical Engineering. Mechanical Engineering. Uh, right. Princeton University, Ashwini um, and and uh, uh, on and on. Yes. They are, and all of them, continue with music. I would say majority of them, like Kyle Lu, who became uh, a surgeon mm -hmm. and who continued playing music. And for many of our students, music is a stepping stone to realizing how to focus, how to um, work hard, how not to give up. Because when you're performing, you might not be so good at one concert. And sometimes parents don't understand that in order for a child to really be good. They have to perform over and over, and then and have multiple lessons. Yes, I completely agree <laughs> with that because you know it's interesting how in our academics people always emphasize um, a well-rounded education. Yes. It should yes. be the same in music yes. as well. Yes. Yes. You can't only learn the notes, one instrument yes. or one thing. Yeah, right. you need to also understand why the composer thinks this way, and that comes right. from music theory. That comes right. from music history. Mm -hmm. It's something that's offered in Russia and just not as emphasized mm -hmm. here in music education. And you also need to be able to play with others. Mm -hmm. Here comes chamber music, yes. here comes, Other right. Groups, yeah. I, I have to say, like, um, as a parent, mm -hmm. without a scholarship program, some of the kids that are so talented, they need two, three, four lessons, or they want to try different instrument, like Elena said, they want to try chamber. Without a scholarship program, we, everybody is struggling with their daily budgets, and even the school is not charging much, but we still have to pay the teachers. That's not possible to happen. But yeah. these students, they work so hard. They, they put an incredible like commitment to their, their music, and it's a drive of excel themselves. You know, it's just fascinating to see how students can really excel themselves mm -hmm. and it advance is. themselves mm -hmm. and in music with this kind of opportunity. Um, as Elena have said, that my own daughter, Sharon, is such a lucky student to be to receiving scholarship. She started with only 45, 45 minutes, minutes yes. per week. With me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I am a middle class, regular family mm -hmm. parents, and this is all we can budget. But Elena discovered that she is really talented. And hardworking. And, and focused. And hardworking. And she is willing to work. So she offered and had her audition for scholarship, and Nelly offered her scholarship. And then she could have two hours lesson per week. Then one summer, Elena discovered that Sharon has beautiful voice, Incredible voice. when she, really she was does. just yeah. singing for fun. Yes. <laughs> and Elena tried to convince me she needs to be voice trained, lesson. her voice, to have voice lesson. I was honest. I said, I, I just cannot budget this much money on music lessons, and, you know, I, as much as I love music. But without the scholarship program, she would not be able to find her love in both piano and voice. Mm -hmm. And today, she's studying engineering in Cornell, mm -hmm. but she sings in the prestigious mm -hmm. a cappella group. She also plays piano with chamber, mm -hmm. and she has told me herself, she said, Mom, you know, voice, singing, mm -hmm. and piano has become part of my identity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is how the scholarship program changed students' mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was I convinced that. that Sharon was going to become an opera singer. Her <laughs> voice became so powerful. She could carry this in Metropolitan Opera, and I remember her singing the French the French piece, uh, uh, Au Rêve. And then I was so proud. She was Ariel in the Radnor High School production. Musical, yeah. Musical. She was the lead. <laughs> she was the lead, a That's Little awesome. Mermaid. Yes. yes. It was very yes. special. I was so yeah. proud of her. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, speaking of the scholarship program, how do you guys get funding for the program? Um, it's not easy. 
it's not easy. Um, we used to have a most amazing lady um, who has for 10 years supported our program. And she herself uh, graduated from Juilliard, then she was uh, teaching at Temple University. And when she met my mother, Nellie, um, her granddaughter was a piano student, uh, uh, Becky Solomon Becky was Solomon, a piano yeah. student. And she believed in this idea. She truly believed. So she started contributing. And for 10 years, she has been doing this. So she was a private individual who was a great philanthropist. Um, in the interim, she, at this moment, has stopped contributing. Um, the school has been doing a lot of concerts. And every single concert that we have, the school has, that we charge for, 100 percent of this goes to the proceeds goes to the 501c3. Mm -hmm. And if anybody is watching this program, if anybody believes in classical music, the importance of classical music, please consider donating to this. You will be changing lives of many people. We have two concerts that are coming up. We just have our, what's called Rising Stars, winter concerts. But we have two fun events. Please come. It's February 16th, Sunday, at 5 p.m. at St. Luke's Church, we're going to have our faculty concert, brilliant musicians, and you will be amazed, and your jaw will drop hearing the level of their playing. And then uh, Stephanie and I and Brenna in our office, we have a small office, and Elizabeth and our board, we're playing a huge event at Westchester University. We're mm -hmm. calling it the Celebration <coughs> of the Arts. It's going to take place on March 15th, 15th, March yes. 15th at 3.30. They, it will be also a competition that's open to the Nelly Burma School students. But what's unique about the celebration of the arts is that we invited the Pennsylvania Academy of Ballet dancers to dance with our students. So we're going mm -hmm. to have musicians performing, and then we're going to have students, uh, uh, ballet students. And then we have Arden uh, theater school students who will be reciting some uh, monologues, which is going to be part of our orchestra piece called The Carnival of the Animals by mm -hmm. Sans. And the, the kids from uh, uh, Mainline Ballet will be coming in different costumes. And it will be really, I'm looking forward so much, because for young musicians, it's important to know that not is, there's more than just music. There's also ballet and theater yes. and art. And the same thing for uh, them, to see what can young people do to accomplish so much. So this money goes towards this uh, uh, process. We had an auction at the most amazing ladies' house, uh, Dominique uh, Reef, Dominique and Jeffrey Reef, and we raised money. And I remember Sharon going around with this beautiful gray, sparkly <laughs> waist. Soliciting one for us, money. Please give us. Yes. <laughs> she was this beautiful girl. And we had companies, mainline businesses, that donated all kinds of items. And yeah, thank right. you. If anybody is yeah. watching, thank you to those that contributed to our auction and contributed to various uh, coming to our concerts. And uh, uh, the board has worked very, hi uh, very, very hard to invite people. Yes. yes. Thank you, Elizabeth. You're and welcome. Thank you to both of you for making time to come out today. Um, I know all of our lives are busy. Thank you to you for coming out with the um, like pa patient crises that you deal with. <laughs> we really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank um, you so much. And you're Thank very you welcome. for joining us. We I have one you. last thing to oh, say. Sure. Yes, actually, uh, please come to our music concerts and please buy our tickets. And if you cannot come to the concert, consider advertise in our program or consider go to our website to donate and uh, help to foster and to help the in young individuals to see their dream come true. Thank you. Uh, thank you to MLTV Mainline Network. Perfect. And thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed hearing about our school and our talented students, and more importantly, that you learned something exciting about classical music education in our community. Please tune in next time when we talk about preparations for our upcoming multimedia event, the Celebration of the Arts Gala Concert, which will be held on Sunday, March 15th, at Westchester University and will feature our music students alongside ballet students from Narberth's Pennsylvania Academy of Ballet. Until next time, stay musical. <laughs>